A flag is a symbol. A symbol that conveys a message or meaning or it represents something. Flags do not have natural connection with their meaning, yet they are created through social interaction. In other words, a flag is a symbolic object created by people to refer to specific ideas, beliefs, objects or concepts. The flag is considered as the most important and strongest symbol of independence. Yet, it's not clear when exactly a flag was first used. Flags can be used for multiple reasons, such as to honor or dishonor, encourage, warn, commemorate and represent, etc. Flags historically have two functions. First, a flag is a political symbol that represents unity. It ties the members of a group together for a common heritage, common goal, identity or destiny. Second, a flag is accepted as a sacred element and a spiritual guide for a group. Study of flags is called as vexillology. Whitney Smith, a famous vexillologist, stated fundamental features of flags in an article. According to this article, first, flags are artifacts conceived of and constructed by human beings interacting within their cultures. All flags are messages of intentional and sometimes unintentional content made by one or more individuals and addressed to themselves and or others. A flag is a form of social communication. The purpose of the study of flags is to understand more accurately and more completely the nature of human society. Smith says, after these are conceded, further theses may be set forth concerning the nature of the study of flags. If you want to read more on the subject, the article link is shared below. Vexillology is considered to have three phases throughout its history. The first phase dates back to thousands of years ago. People have been using various symbols for many reasons and these symbols took place in flags or banners. The first phase of vexillology starts when somebody or a group of people started to become interested in flags, symbols and their meanings and studied them and spread the knowledge they learned. The only method of using parchments, clay tablets or some other methods turned to copied flag books and flag charts with the invention of press machine. The first phase continued until 19th or 20th century. A couple of essential works were published at this time, both in Europe and USA, by vexillologists or writers. This phase comes to an end with the creation of term vexillology by Whitney Smith. Whitney Smith was born in 1940 in Massachusetts, USA. He studied political science and received a bachelor's degree in the field in 1961. During his time at Harvard, Smith designed Guiana's flag. After modification and addition of black and white, it was adopted in 1966. It's also known as the Golden Arrowhead. He received his doctorate in political science at Boston University in 1964. He originated the term vexillology, which refers to the scholarly analysis of all aspects of flags. He was founder of several vexillology organizations. Smith was a fellow of the International Federation of Vexillological Associations. Smith also designed this flag as a proposed flag of Antarctica. Antarctica has no government or sovereign ruler and the flag has not been adopted in an official capacity by any organization. Third phase. There are two significant events that start this phase. As Whitney Smith states in his article, 1. The publication of the flag bulletin No. 233 with the title Celebrating 50 Years of Vexillology in 2011. 2. On July 16, 2013, in a formal ceremony in Danvers, Massachusetts, the scholarly holdings of the Flag Research Center were turned over to the Briscoe Center at the University of Texas, where they shall become the Whitney Smith Flag Research Collection. By this way, the largest collection of flags and vexillology related content became available for whomever is interested. This also led to further presentations by flag scholars from different countries. Yet, there are still very few research and study in this field. Vexillology is a relatively young field of study. 
Smith and his colleagues also point out the fundamentals of designing a good flag. According to them, there are five main principles when it comes to design a flag. Number one, simplicity. A flag should be easy to draw for a kid from memory. As a flag will encounter with different situations from calm weather to severe wind, it's crucial for a flag to be recognized from different states like waving or hanging from a pole. A flag should also be recognizable from distance. Flag of Japan and Turkey are good examples of this rule. Simple, easy to remember and draw from mind. On the other hand, flag of Saudi Arabia and Turkmenistan are quite hard to reproduce. Can a child draw this from memory? I don't think so if the child is not super talented. Number two, meaningful symbolism. A flag should have important elements of a country's cultural heritage. It could be a symbol, shape, even color. It should be related to the people it represents. A flag carries emotional value, therefore it should be created accordingly. It's also highly recommended to use stylized objects or symbols rather than realistic pictures. Flag of Estonia and Ukraine are good examples of this rule. They both represent natural phenomena in their countries. Blue represents sky, black forest and white snow in Estonia flag, while blue represents sky and yellow fertile land in Ukrainian flag. On the other hand, flag of Mexico has a realistic picture of eagle that violates this rule. Number 3. Basic colors. A flag should be restricted to three colors that are chosen from main color set. The main colors in question are red, blue, green, black, white, and yellow. Some other colors are rarely used such as purple or orange, but they are mostly not associated with good design. Another important subject to think about is contrasting colors. The colors used in the flag should contrast well and be distinguished easily. If more than one dark color will be in use, they should be separated by a light color, for example. A flag should be clearly identified when produced in a grayscale that allows only black and white shades. Flag of Italy is a good example of this rule, while flag of Seychelles violates it. Number 4. No lettering or seals. Adding letters or seals is not a good choice for some reasons. As we mentioned above, a flag can come across with various situations. It can wave, bend, stand idle, turn upside down, etc. Letters and seals are not useful in some of these situations as they become unreadable, especially from distance. As letters are not reversible, it requires more fabric to produce the flag. Bangladesh would be a good example of this rule, while uh, Saudi Arabia and Nicaragua not, as they have some letters on them. Number 5. Be distinctive and related. A flag should be unique as it represents a unique group of people. Creating a unique flag may be possible using distinctive colors, symbols, any objects that show history, heritage, culture, independence, even religion. Flag of Canada would be a good example, while flag of Indonesia, Monaco and Poland would be not, as they are all very similar.